And welcome to our studios here in Washington, D.C. I'm Mike Walter. We begin with the global market and the worldwide volatility triggered again by panic selling on China's main stock exchanges. For the second time this week, trading in China was automatically halted by a new mechanism, which Beijing has suspended. CCTV's Roy Ruddenberg has the story. The markets in China were open for just minutes on Thursday before an automated mechanism halted trading for the day. Chinese officials quickly tried to ease jitters by announcing they would suspend use of the new circuit breaker meant to prevent panic selling. Some suggest it may be doing the opposite. Regulators also confirmed they would extend by three months a six-month ban on major shareholders selling their stock in large companies. The ban was due to expire on Friday and many speculated without renewed restrictions some $150 billion in assets could be sold off instantly. Beyond China's borders, many wondered what market instability in the world's second largest economy might mean for the rest of the globe. That is the trick, is trying to interpret what the weakness of Chinese share prices really is telling us about what's going on in China. And global markets reacted accordingly. Hong Kong's benchmark stock index closed down more than 3 percent. The Nikkei in Japan closed 2.3 percent down. And it was a similar story for the DAX in Germany and for the FTSE Euro First 300 index, which shed around 2 percent. Many are now watching what will happen with China's currency, the renminbi. China was the only country that didn't weaken its current currency whilst all other major competitors were weakening theirs. So I think now with a very strong currency and uh, an economy that is decelerating, it is only natural that the currency starts to come down as the central bank loosens policy. Anywhere else, exactly the same thing would be happening. I don't think it's a reason for panic. The Chinese central bank has been allowing the renminbi's official value to decline steadily. It did so again on Thursday. Some say it's an indication that the government's efforts to shift the economy more towards a consumption-based one may not be working as well as Beijing would like them to. And since China accounts for a sixth of the global economy, investors say that is a cause for concern. And it was a bad day for markets on this side of the world. The Dow Jones Industrial Average and the S&P 500 each closing the day 2.3 percent down, the Nasdaq dropping even further by 3 percent, sending U.S. stocks to three-month low levels and making this the worst four-day start of the trading year in more than a century. Rowie Ruttenberg, CCTV in Washington.